there are no questions, then let me, um, I wanted to make up a few scenarios and, um, and talk about, um, uh, talk about motion with those few scenarios that um, I had written down for myself. Um, so I have three axes to draw position, velocity, and acceleration for different scenarios. So I wanted to just to talk about some of those scenarios and um, and um, draw uh, represent those scenarios in terms of motion graphs. So I guess we have maybe about ten more minutes on this. So let me um, do one that kind of relates to uh, one of the questions, homework questions you have. But I realized in the homework question, it's uh, kind of cut a little bit short. So I will extend that a little bit to illustrate that with a, uh, well, uh, with, a, um, with a situation where you might have to describe some, uh, some situation with uh, multiple stages. So um, the homework question I'm thinking of, it has a scenario with a diver uh, diving from uh, 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 diving board. I think I'm saying diving too many times, but it's okay. Um, so the situation will describe it. A diver jumps straight upward from a diving board with some speed V not. Um, and she, and on the way down, she barely misses the diving board and um, dives <laughs> straight into the pool. And I think your homework question ends here, but let me add a little bit more bit so that I have more interesting motion graph to sketch um, into the pool. And uh, after entering the water, she slows down with an uh, acceleration. Let me make up some number of uh, A equals uh, 5G. That seems a lot. <laughs> A equals 3G. Um, or that would be approximately 30 meter per second squared. Um, so that's the scenario, and I want you to, um, uh, to uh, want you to show you how you would sketch something like that on a motion graph if you had to. Now, on your homework question, you don't have to because there's no real good way for my help math to grade that. So, so you won't have to worry about doing this on your homework, but it's something that uh, you shouldn't know how to do. So, now. One thing I will start by saying is something like this is a very difficult to sketch on motion uh, on position graph correctly at a first try, because um, your intuition kind of messes you up. So let me, uh, but let me give you some attempt, and then I will use the velocity and acceleration graphs to kind of, um, kind of. Uh, make make some of the more ambiguous things clearer. So let me draw a, a kind of reference line for the water level, so that at least I know when the diver um, enters the water or not. So um, wait, is it all? Yeah, water level. Actually, I guess I need to draw two different levels. So let me do one for water level and one for the so let me draw two levels. Uh, there's a one level for the water level, and I think I need a second level for the where the diving board is. So let's say the diving board is around the here. So this is the diving board. Then on the position graph, you might draw something that looks like this. The diver starts from the position of the diving board at time equals zero. And maybe you remember enough of projectile motion or motion with a constant acceleration that you know to draw something that looks like a parabola. So this is with acceleration being downward acceleration of minus g. And then um, what's a little bit harder to do on a position graph 
is uh, what happens to the position after the diver enters the water. You have some sense that the diver should come to a stop because it's uh, something about slowing down. And um, that's kind of where you have to leave it. And this graph as drawn, it's ambiguous. Um, it's, uh, it's not wrong, but there are some features here that's not best to represent it on a position graph. So let me do that on an, uh, on an acceleration graph instead. So on an acceleration graph, I can, I can uh, translate the physical situation described in this uh, statement a lot more faithfully because I can take a point that represents when the diver enters water and that's a very clear dividing line for acceleration. So before the diver enters water, I know that the acceleration of the diver should be minus g. So this is minus g. And while the diver is in the air, the entire time, the acceleration is minus g. That's what free fall, a motion under gravity alone is. And when the diver enters water, then the acceleration changes. And this is where you kind of have to think through carefully um, whether it should be minus 3G or it should be plus 3G. This is where you want to think in terms of relative directions. The diver at the moment when she enters water, she's moving downward. So for in order for her to slow down, the acceleration must be upward. And you can kind of see that represented here in the upward curving uh, position curve. And it's uh, in this acceleration graph that you would make that clear that uh, after the diver enters water, she undergoes an upward acceleration of plus 3G. So, so yeah, on the acceleration graph, this, uh, um, and this is where I should stop. Um, and um, and on the, so on the acceleration graph, this is more or less a uh, one-to-one -one faithful representation of what the questions take, what the this word description described. And um, for that reason, when I usually draw a, a motion graph, it's the acceleration graph that I usually want to start out with. So, okay, once you have acceleration graph, then you have enough information to start drawing velocity graph. And this is where you have to um, <laughs> put on your analytical hat and really um, think through this mathematically. I know it all looks like a picture, so that's where people sometimes make a mistake of kind of going uh, kind of going with your feelings. And until you develop your intuition for kinematics, you don't want to go with your feeling here. You want to um, actually read carefully from what the statement says, keep thinking about what you learned in calculus and apply that here. So it said, uh, jump, diver jumps straight upward with some speed V not. So you are given an initial velocity and you need to use that here. You cannot start the velocity from zero position um, or any random point you pick. There's a positive we not that you start from and it's positive because it's upward. And then to, um, so I like to think linearly, sequentially in time. So I know where, what the value of velocity at time equals zero. So the next question is, how is the velocity going to be changing as you move on from time equals zero? And the one guide you have is the acceleration, which is the derivative of velocity. So it's going to give you the slope of the velocity as you go from here. You have minus g, so that should be the slope, something downward sloping negatively sloping. And I'm trying to kind of put the negative slope in a way so that, you know, make my graph kind of to scale for the next uh, part. So let me do that. Um, and until I reach this point in time, when the diver enters water, it's going to this one, it's going to be this one constant slope 
the entire time. So the graph will look something like this. And uh, so this point is a special point that you couldn't see in the acceleration curve. It doesn't look special in the acceleration curve, but it's a, this a special point in the position curve. It's the point where um, the diver at, was at the top of her motion. So that should match up in your position curve where you do see now that the slope of the position curve is zero and the value of velocity is zero there. And the, at the moment where diver enters water, something happens. And that something is that the slope of this curve now changes to a positive 3G. So it's going to go from being um, negatively sloped, downward sloped, to upward sloped, positively sloped. And it should be steeper than this because, the, um, because now it's 3G. So um, let me just put this point here so that I can do it reasonably uh, to scale. So it looks something like this. Uh, so once again, constant slope. And this should, the slope here should match up with the value you see here. The slope that you see here should match with the value that you see here. So, um, and once you draw this correctly, then um, you can see that how I drew the position curve here matches up. I started out with some steep negative slope and it uh, flattens out to a zero value or a zero flat slope and that matches with the velocity going to zero. So that's an illustration of drawing a motion graph. 